when we do soil and leaf tissue sampling, spring's a great opportunity to, um, to grab those samples. Spring offers uh, a very um, consistent period of time with soil moisture and temperature. So sampling at that time of year will give you a more consistent response rather than say waiting for the autumn or summer where soil moisture um, changes uh, can affect results. And one of the other reasons why we really want to make sure that we sample or we can sample in spring is because we can identify any areas that are atypical of the soil. So behind me you can see urine clumps and, and, uh, and dung clumps. Now if we sample these in the autumn or in the summer when we couldn't see those clumps, they were just dry um, grass, then obviously we could be sampling high levels of phosphorus and potassium which would then be leading to, to false results. Again the same rules apply with we want at least 30 cores taken to 10 centimetres uh, and using a reputable lab uh, that is ASPAC and NADA accredited like uh, Nutrient Advantage. Soil tests will give us insights into a lot of the major nutrients, soil structure, um, pH whether it's an issue or not and, and we can make fertiliser plans and decisions around those results either for the spring applications or for the autumn applications. Leaf tissue tests will give us a really good indication for, for micronutrients as well as major nutrients but they, they, are, they do offer, plant tissue tests do offer a better um, indication for trace elements than what micronutrients and what a soil test will. The Nutrient Advantage Laboratory is a first class facility that's purpose built for soil and plant tissue sampling. It's uh, NADA accredited and ASPAC accredited which gives the lab credibility from a point of view of standardising uh, results and repeatability of those results. For ryegrass uh, we want to take about three to five centimetres above the base of the plant uh, and, and take that whole, whole tiller and send that off to the lab at about two and a half to three leaf growth stage uh, and we need about 40 to 50 of those tillers to, uh, to represent a sample. Now obviously that's going to be in a representative uh, area, it's not going to be in those urine cl clumps or in any of those um, uh, dung patches either. We want to avoid gateways, we want to avoid water troughs and, uh, and get that representative sample. For clover um, what we do is we take, um, we take the pediol and, and the leaf from, from, the, from all clover species except for strawberry and white clover. With strawberry and white clover we actually take the stem and above. To get really good results from, uh, f from clovers in relation to zinc and copper we really want to be grabbing the youngest formed or youngest fully emerged leaf and, and, send, and taking that sample and sending it off as well. So in some of the leaf tissue samples that have come through the Nutrient Advantage lab we've found that we've had high nitrate and low molybdenum levels which would indicate that moly is deficient and that's having an impact on keeping nitrate levels elevated. So in those situations applying molybdenum to that partial system would be of benefit and similarly to understand if there's any deficiencies around zinc or copper would be a great opportunity with grabbing a leaf tissue sample from either a ryegrass or a clover pasture and indeed loosen.